Well, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company did exactly what I thought they would do in wake of early sales data that I was privy to, and that is give an official announcement and update on the launch sales for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. And we now know that Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield have sold 6 million copies worldwide during launch. Now, during launch would include um, <clears throat> the whole weekend and all of that, not just launch day. So that's really impressive. That is ahead of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Uh, and this is obviously before we get to Black Friday, where assuredly more and more are going to sell along with Switch lights and all of that jazz. Uh, we also have the launch sales for it uh, just for Japan, and it sold about 1.3 million in Japan, moved 180,000 Switches combined of the Switch Lite and the regular Switch, etc. Technically, it's like a few hundred short of launch week for Let's Go last year in terms of uh, number of switches sold but you know I, the, if you're reading into you know mere hundreds of units of difference in 180,000 plus sales I don't really know that it means a whole lot uh, but what is interesting here is that it did sell over 2 million copies in the U.S. alone and that has made it the highest grossing launch ever for the Pokemon series at least in the United States states uh they are not saying it is the fastest selling pokemon ever they're not saying it's the best selling pokemon ever just that it also let's go to pikachu and let's go eevee and it's made the most money of any other uh pokemon game so that is very interesting obviously we don't know where the sales for this is going to end uh we it'll have a strong rest of this month of course you know six million worldwide don't be surprised when it passes 10 million by the time we even get to december and maybe a couple million in december but it'll be interesting to see where it goes from there if this can be a 15 to 20 million seller uh like some of the best of the best pokemon games have been or if it's going to be one of those games that uh kind of peters off around the 11 or 12 million mark sort of like let's go pikachu and let's go eevee did you would assume the hype around this game is much bigger than Let's Go was, so it, it should outsell Let's Go pretty handedly. Uh, but whether or not it, it can achieve, you know, sun and moon levels, whether or not we're, we're looking at, you know, you know silver and, and gold levels or something, is, is yet to be determined. And obviously, there's the whole will it be the best selling of all time, which needs to get or get really close to 30 million in sales to pull that one off. So I don't know that that's attainable, but you never know. It, it's it's possible. Um, you know, these launch sales are not are not bad. Um, they're also not like the best ever, but they are very, very good. So what does this mean in general? Well, it means uh, that in my last video, uh, so people got really upset at me talking about, you know, how haters got kind of slapped in the face by the sales, and now we actually have the sales. And it, it just turns out that no matter how many people are critical of the games, no matter how many people hate on these games, or I guess people don't like that word hate because it, they're just too focused on the negative context. So let's just say strongly dislike the games. Uh, they don't really matter in the grand scheme for Game Freak and the Pokemon Company because uh, there are essentially... Oh, too many people that just enjoy the games for what they are and don't care about any of the stuff going on on the internet. I think what happens oftentimes when we're on the internet, and this is just something I personally have experienced many times, um, and, and I can only talk about my personal experiences because they're, they're the only ones I have to work with here. Uh, when I uh, go on the internet and I see a lot of people complaining about something, but then I also see that something sells very well, and then I talk to people in real life that are playing that very thing that the internet thinks no one should buy and they talk about how much they enjoy it these people aren't sitting here on the internet um you know going on and on about it and, and we have this weird attitude I, as gamers i guess to dismiss people who aren't on the internet for some ungodly reason because they're filthy casuals or whatever you want to call them as if you need to be on the internet on gaming forums and youtube to be a serious gamer it's weird because I have friends that would be easily categorized as that because they're not on the internet talking about this stuff, yet they play hundreds of hours of games every single week. It's crazy to me when I think about that. And then I go back to um, them being called a casual just because they're not on the internet praising or, you know, bitching, for lack of a better word, about games. Like, they're, they're just casuals. You know, I... I my children, as an example, um, you know, be like, oh, they're kids. 
and kids by definition are casuals. But they play more games than most adults, and they play them really frequently, a.k.a. every single day. So what's so casual about that? I, I, I seriously ask you, did, would you want to be called a casual when you were a kid playing video games? Does that make sense to you with the amount of time? You think back on how much video games you played as a child. Is that something that fits a definition for you? So why should it be a definition for today's children? Why? Because they play games on phones? That's a you problem if you want to dismiss them because they play tablet games just as hardcore as we were playing N64 games back in the day. Like That's, that's a you problem in you being dismissive of what they're playing more so than them not actually gaming seriously because they are gaming very seriously. My daughter takes Minecraft, Roblox, and a few other games but as seriously as I was taking The Legend of Zelda, Mario 64, and Duke Nukem. Like, she was taking these games as serious as I take those games. I'm not going to, you know, judge her because of the games she plays. Like, how elitist do you have to be to think you're better than someone because you play games that you think are better experiences like who gives a crap we all play games for the same reason to have a damn good time so i think that what this shows is all the criticism for these games i'm not going to say it's not warranted i'm not going to say that we shouldn't want or expect game freak to do better we shouldn't especially when it comes to frame rate performance with, with, with how this game looks from a visual perspective where it doesn't necessarily look like it's that visually impressive and we now have literal direct evidence that um, some textures in the game aren't even in 1080p even though the game displays in 1080p some of the textures aren't even 1080p textures so when you, when you think about stuff like that you're like how is this game dipping in performance ever from you know 30 fps to 20 we're not even talking about 60 we're talking 30 fps to 20 like how how is that happening and the obvious answer is this is likely the 3ds engine uh just running on switch and the 3ds engine is, for pokemon is fine and everything which the 3ds engine is actually a modded ds engine which is a modded they basically have just been modifying the same engine you know every single new gen of hardware but it's very obvious that uh, it's probably time to build a new engine for Switch uh, that actually is optimized for the Switch's hardware. And then from there, you can expand upon that and do something magical and have a 60 FPS Pokemon game, which is what this should be, um, and have no fear of running better textures. In fact, I wonder if the lower texture quality is intentional to make the FPS dips not worse, especially in the wild area. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Again, there's plenty of warranted criticism. Some people don't care as much about the national decks as others, so some people don't care about that or care about the whole hashtag Game Freak Glide thing. That's uh, in the eye of the beholder and, and what you personally care about. There are people who never cared about the national decks or obviously people that passionately care about that. That's obviously one of the biggest criticisms. It's all legit. You guys can criticize away and have your fun, but what is also legit is that there's millions and millions and millions, six million to be exact, that seem to be enjoying Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I don't think it's wrong for them to enjoy it. I know it's upsetting because when people buy the game, it, it doesn't give Game Freak incentive to change. But I'm just going to be honest, and this is just... It, you can call it a personal opinion if you want, um, because it is. Uh, but I noticed that Game Freak was being lazy with Pokemon a long time ago. It didn't take Sword and Shield to open my eyes to it. I said this in the comments in the last video, but... Maybe it needs to be just stated right right here in the open. Game Freak hasn't really put a ton of effort into Pokemon in a long time. Um, g they were given the excuse, basically, that, oh, they're on handhelds. Because they're on handhelds, on limited hardware, although all hardware actually has limits, but that's neither here nor there, on limited hardware, that uh, it's okay to do what they do. It's okay for them, generation to, to the next generation, to just copy-paste um, literal elements to use the same engine to uh, copy paste textures and sometimes you know just remix music and, and call it good not even come up with new music sometimes um, to obviously create one set of Pokemon uh, uh, you know you know textures and Pokemon um, what, what are those things called uh, 
Oh man, that was a, that was the big debate too as well whether or not they had to remake them. Anyways, the point is, you know, using the same Pokemon game to game, it's all copy pasted. Uh, and yes, copy pasting happens a lot just in general in the coding world, to just to make coding easier. But Game Freak was basically doing bare minimum work all these years on these 3DS games. Oh, look at the love and the passion they put into this, they put into that. When you could literally stack the games up side by side by side, just take a random um, spot in the game, stack it up side by side by side. And there's going to be times when if you aren't a hardcore Pokemon fan, you'd be hard pressed to tell me which Pokemon game is which because they all look like carving copies of each other because they are because that's what Game Freak has been doing for 20 years. It's nothing new. I mean, we just had the 20th anniversary of um, you know Gold and Silver, and I think back to those days, and not a whole lot has changed. I think what the biggest leap was um, when they went to I think X and Y, when they finally got away from just a straight top-down sprite style and actually gave us like a more 3D, uh, 2.5D, you know, angled perspective on the world, kind of like Link's Awakening uh, on Switch that it does. You know, going from that where it was originally top down to that more angled thing. A Link Between Worlds, I guess, does the same thing. And it's like, that's great, but that was the leap. And then they just kept it that way and copy-pasted. Like, think about think about this. Like, almost all of the games, you know, start out with your you wake up. You choose one of three Pokemon. You have a rival who always chooses the opposite Pokemon of yours. And then blah, 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 blah. The stories are all very similar. They're very repetitive. Um, eight gyms, and, and even when they got rid of the gyms for, for a little bit, they still had a very similar pacing to how the game worked. The games are just, they are what they are. Pokemon games are Pokemon games. They are Madden. They are Call of Duty. If you are hardcore in the Call of Duty and hardcore in the Madden, you can tell the difference between every single version of Madden. You can tell the difference between every single version of Call of Duty. You could spot all the things, tell us all the different story elements, all the different this, all the different that. And that's great. And all of it is true. But if you are an actual casual on the outside looking in, you can actually see it for what it is. And that is, oh, the games are not... Uh, are not that different from each other. The one you played one Call of Duty, you played them all. You played one Madden, you played them all. You played one Pokemon game, you played them all. And I realized that a long time ago, and I think that's a huge reason why I started to not really care about the series because uh, Pokemon is is near and dear to my heart because it's a huge part of my childhood. But then it just became the same thing on repeat, and maybe I was spoiled. And, and I had to have been spoiled because there's a lot of games that are like that. It's not just Call of Duty and Madden, right? You play Doom, you're going to play Doom Eternal next year. It's going to feel like Doom because it's a Doom game. Um, there's nothing wrong with this with, with this approach. Um, but that's, that, that's when the fans don't expect anything else. And what happened is Pokemon took a leap to a, a home console. You know, what Nintendo calls a home console. And it has a lot more power than Pokemon's ever had. And it doesn't really feel like they did anything with that power beyond an, a, a free camera in one part of the game which just makes the rest of the game feel like it's lacking. It's weird. And again, I'm not even going to say it's completely lazy because Game Freak doesn't have time when they make Pokemon games. I don't know if you know this. They spent less time developing, uh, you know, Sun and Moon than they did this game. For people who think, oh, they're rushing, they're late. They spent more time making this game on Switch than they did. They had, they had a, a, bit, a larger team and more development time to make this game than they did Sun and Moon. And yet, this is what they came up with. This is their first true blue mainline Pokemon game made in HD. That's a huge transition there. They had to get the engine to work on Switch because they weren't going to build one from the ground up. Uh, they had to do a lot. And plus, it doesn't even include part of the team that was working on Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee as well because, you know, they got to keep that yearly release schedule going because, hey, we can't have a break in that anymore. We've had a break in it before. We didn't like having that year break in there, so we got to keep it going. People keep buying it, so why would we stop? And Game Freak is just under all this pressure to get games out as quickly as they can. Why would they change when there are no, there's no incentive to? The people keep buying the games. And they're loving it, and there's nothing wrong with loving it. So that's the thing. Like, I can't be mad that people enjoy the games. Um, it, it's never going to be a Breath of the Wild. It's never going to be a Zelda in general. See, what, what, what has kept Zelda so fresh over the years is that you never really know what's going to happen game to game. We know that Breath of the Wild 2, the sequel or whatever it's going to be, is going to feel very similar to Breath of the Wild because, well, it's literally a sequel to Breath of the Wild. But after that, 
Po- like Zelda doesn't stay on that stick for more than like two or three games, and then all of a sudden they move on to something in a completely different direction. Heck, we had the original Legend of Zelda, and then all of a sudden they went with a side scroller RPG thing in Zelda Two, and they went back to the Zelda One thing with all these new elements, and they kept that going for a little bit. And then they did this leap to Ocarina of Time, and they kept that with Majora's Mask, and then they kind of poo-pooed all that and decided to go in a completely different direction with this um ocean type type of game and and this new art direction and the wind waker and like they just keep doing this and then all of a sudden we're we're all the way you know fast forward at breath of the wild you know following up a a three-player multiplayer zelda in triforce heroes and it's like zelda just keeps doing all these new things mario is the same way as well there's some very repetitive stuff like in the new super mario brothers series but then like you'll get a galaxy one galaxy two and then the next time we see mario in that kind of setting you get odyssey and it's not the same type of game and so pokemon doesn't do that though Pokemon does that new Super Mario Brothers style and just does it over and over and over again on repeat every single year. It's doing Kirby. I'm, I just got to be honest. Kirby comes out every year. It's It's got practically the same amount of effort put into it as Kirby does. The difference is that more people enjoy what Pokemon is than what Kirby is. Sorry, Kirby. Don't mean to insult you. I know you're Sakurai's boy. But, man, we got to be honest. Pokemon destroys you in popularity. 240 million-plus copies of Pokemon have sold worldwide. Uh, in general and uh, this isn't even counting the mobile games and and all the spin-offs and all that this is just the mainline game so i gotta remember pokemon is what it is and you're either gonna love it for what it is or you're gonna hate it but uh i guess you shouldn't say love or hate i don't hate pokemon uh i am going to be picking up a copy of sword or shield uh, eventually here i do have a broken switch uh, in my possession right now that i am attempting to fix uh the big thing i want to fix on it first is the video out because i want to use this switch specifically to stream and record gameplay for you guys and uh the video out doesn't work it charges but it, it, i put it in a dock and it, it's not displaying out to the tv and i gotta figure out why that is one one thing i have to do is make sure i do the, the correct cable order on the dock because sometimes the wrong cable order can screw things up and it's very specific you have to plug in the uh power into the the dock and then you have to plug in the HDMI into the dock and then plug that HDMI into the TV uh, and that'll sometimes fix the problem right there it's like a firmware issue I don't know it's weird Um, and and that's one way obviously there could literally be a problem with the USB-C port and I got to replace it there could be a short somewhere in the in the circuit board that that you know I might have to fix with with a wire Um, there's a lot that I need to sort out with that and if I can get that to work then I'll fix the rest of the switch and here I'll I'll be back streaming with you guys and, and, and recording new gameplay uh, but for now, I am okay with what's happening with Sword and Shield because I've had to be okay with it for the past decade, two decades, because that's just what Pokemon is. Um, some people are just finally realizing it uh, because they finally, you know, did the proverbial gone too far in their laziness. Uh, when really this is probably one of the most difficult games they've ever had to make because it's the first one they've done in HD. And uh, everyone always underestimates how hard it is to make main core games for anything in HD until they actually do it. So this is actually a a game that they had the most time with, a game that they um, spent the most development money on, and uh, it's still not good enough. Reality is Game Freak isn't going to change. They have a strict schedule. Um, and this is just what Pokemon is, and you're either going to accept it or you're not. It's what it's always been, and uh, if it took it coming to a quote-unquote home console to open your eyes, oh well. I mean, if they did the same thing and released it at 40 bucks on 3DS, I bet you there'd be a lot less people complaining. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, let me know what you think about the sales of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, I am Nathaniel Ruffeljantz from Nintendo Prime. Still not feeling the greatest. I announced on Twitter that I have like a flu kind of thing going on. I, I am at the tail end of it, so I'm getting a little better. Uh, hopefully I'll get a couple of videos out for you guys today. Because I've been talking a lot of Pokemon lately. I think it's time to, now that we have the launch sales, I guess it's just kind of time to, to move the, move on forward to, to talk about something else. So uh, thank you guys uh, for listening, and I'll catch you in the next video.